This is Colony Kids CKSOS, where we interview partners, artists, um, friends, thought leaders, etc., about um, their creative process, Hong Kong, um, and a year of crisis um, and change, you can say. Um, so that leads us here interviewing Sam with guest host Mildred from the design team. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hello. So without much further ado, I'm going to let them take take the, the reins. Hi, this is Mildred. Today we have Sam. Hello. Uh, how are you today? Um, I'm good. Yeah. It's cold. Um, do you mind please please introduce yourself? Like who are you? Why should be why should people like know about you? Oh, I don't know if people should know about me, but um, <laughs> um I'm Sam. Um I think maybe um a lot of people know me also by my alter ego Wendy. Um which is yeah, like a kind of like a role that I've created. Um she's like should I just maybe I'll explain Wendy, maybe that's yeah. better. But um uh she's like this apprentice to the traditional um, art of wok cookery. So mm -hmm. um, I guess, yeah, this year I've been um, cooking at my family's soy sauce farm um, and under this project like Wendy's Wok World. And so, yeah, people probably know me from like coming to eat or, um, yeah. Guess I don't really identify with being a chef or like wanting to be a chef in the traditional sense and um, so I like never did any of the culinary school like mm. nothing like that but <clears throat> I think I kind of came into the food world um, almost like semi-accidentally like um, I think like prior to cooking I was like kind of always more interested in doing projects or like yeah projects that were maybe like conceptual I was always more interested in like ideas um, mm. and like finding different ways to like like I don't know express them. that sounds really lame but express them um and but um like kind of through just like wanting a break from thinking about other mediums mm. I like literally just went into a restaurant job like just wanting a break from thinking about certain things you know and then um through doing it like kind of realized I really liked um working with food and um so I was always then I was thinking like oh like maybe wanting to do con more like still conceptual projects um, but using food as a medium and then um, so I think like after my first year of like working in a restaurant and the first mm -hmm. restaurant I worked at was like this vegan restaurant um, vegan vegetarian restaurant and I was only there like part time but um, in that year like I still was thinking I wanted to do like conceptual things but with food as a medium and then like. Um, I tried to do a, a project like that um, at the end of that year and sort of like realized um, that maybe I didn't have enough like understanding of the craft of like mm -hmm. the actual medium to kind of get to what I wanted to portray. So then in like this, like, I don't know, spontaneous decision, I was like, hey, maybe I'm just going to like throw myself like deep into the real like you know food food world like mm. the whole chef life thing and just so i can like understand the language of food a bit better um and so then i kind of went into a restaurant that was a bit, like you know really in that like chef world mm. like chef life vibe um and that was at, at holy folk in hong kong mm. um and yeah and so i think maybe that was like how i went into the like food world um and it definitely wasn't like a intentional like planned out thing like a mm. culinary school like a plan like nothing like that i yeah. see so that's where you learn most of your cooking skill you through exp working experience in an actual restaurant yeah yeah, yeah. i see For sure i was so green like going into both of the restaurants i feel like mm -hmm. i really had no cooking skills um, so what is your mission with like wendy walks world um i yeah so i think like when i first made like Wendy's Walk World. Um it was what is my mission? Hold on, let me think. <laughs> um or just like general like I think it was actually something just concept. like totally for myself. Um mm. I think I kind of created this alter ego as like a way to like kind of like I created her as 
a thing, a person, or yeah, something to um, use to think about um, certain ideas I was interested in, and um, I kind of work through ideas in my head, um, such as like I don't know, like tradition. I like I think she kind of like Wendy, like her whole thing, like with like the walk and everything, is like so much to do with like tradition and like precision also, and like because walk cookery to me is like this um, kind of school that feels really like precise and like so much to do with like accuracy and like mm. timing and heat control like it's this really almost like like I guess the way I see it is a bit like kung fu or something it's mm. very like rigid and like also with yeah like all these like moves and you know so I think for me that whole character always like embodied or like symbolizes like something to do with like ideological purity or like mm. this rigidness and like um and I think uh like when I kind of went into that or like I don't know yeah it was more like for myself to kind of think through these ideas and mm. explore them and um and then I think only and it was always a it wasn't like a it was like a finsta actually like the Wendy's walk roll thing was always just like a jokey like side thing for myself and then I think only when I started um like hosting some dinners mm. at my family's house this year um then it became much more like a almost like a public facing thing and mm. um so I don't think there was ever like a mission but I think uh it's just like a personal project and then the um the dinner part like and the private kitchen vibe mm. part is more just like the like external facing like, outcome of that like internal process mm. maybe I don't know it's confusing <laughs> I'm confused <laughs> so is there any rules in your kitchen and um, any ritual or must do before you cook or while you host a guest or like you play the table stuff like that um, yeah I think uh, okay, like t uh, different parts of that. Like I think rituals. That's a funny word. Um, yeah, maybe for for me, like the whole time I was like, um, kind of staying at my family's, like in the house when I'm in the house and like thinking about these, like, like ideas and um, whatever. I always wear like brown because I've been calling this period of like, <laughs> like um, this phase like a soy sauce residency um, and. Uh, yeah, and just, I don't know, just for fun, I, like, start wearing brown, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm wearing brown right now also. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I think, like, maybe that's, like, a little personal ritual is, like, you know, even picking an outfit for, like, yeah. that day. It's, like, what brown thing am I going to wear today? Um, but then also, obviously, like, um, in preparation for, like, people coming in, like, I think everything, like, af like yeah, like, everything has to be really, um, like, on point and like I really care about the food being good as well ultimately mm -hmm. so um, like there's a lot of preparation like before the guests come in like you know like um, I guess like, I wake up early in the morning and then like go do my like shopping like mm -hmm. go to the market and get all the stuff and then um, there's like definitely a schedule I feel like and I go to like all my stores and like a like kind of a specific order as well mm -hmm. you know and then I go I drive into the house and then I like prep everything and um, yeah, and then like set up my walk station before the mm. guests come, and yeah, so yeah, maybe. Do you have to season the walk? Oh, um, <laughs> sometimes I, I actually don't have to season as much as like restaurants do, just because mm. I am cooking like you know almost like just one like dinner, like it's uh, not as much as like okay. a restaurant like um, operation. So I don't have to like reseason my walk that mm. much. Um, but sometimes when I feel like it's really because every time I have when to, like, I fry something, it's stuck on the walk, and then I learn about seasoning the walk. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. So I just thought, oh, maybe there's like, yeah, I do have to sometimes. <laughs> uh, but I think actually the more you use it, the less you have to do it. I so. see. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to interject. Um, I, I know you mentioned uh, soy sauce residency. Yeah. I was wondering if you can speak on soy sauce in general. Give us um, a little background of your family, family's business in soy sauce, and what you've learned. Um, just being around that. Okay. Um, yeah. I so I guess the soy sauce, ooh, the soy sauce um, factory was started by my grandpa, um, like in the 
God, I don't know, like 40s maybe. Um, but when he was a teenager, he kind of like was working at the soy sauce factory. And then um, the I think like actually it was during like the Japanese invasion, the um, his boss like fled to mainland China and then kind of just left him with this soy sauce factory. So then he was like a like 18 or something and just um, took over with like a couple of his friends and then built it up. And then um, then actually they went on to have like restaurants as well, which I actually forgot when I like nothing to do with like why I got into food. I just really forgot about that. And then um, so, yeah, so then my dad's generation. Um, uh, oh, so after my grandpa died, they like kept the factory going, but it wasn't like something that um, any of them kind of really took over themselves. So at this point, it's just like kept as like a sentimental thing, like um, just because it was like his first like business. And um, and yeah, and I guess the because of that, in a way, like we haven't um, modernized the factory at all. We didn't like build it up, you know, like our neighbors did, um, like because our neighboring like factories, you know, like friends who are also in the soy sauce making um, business or whatever. Um, so yeah, um, so currently it's still like the really traditional way of making it. Um, no preservatives, like all natural, like, you know, with sunlight, fermentation. Um, yeah. And uh, now it's only like three people working there compared to like, you know, hundreds of workers like back in the day. But now it's like three people and they're all like 70 something really old and still doing everything exactly the same way. And um, yeah, I grew up like, obviously our family always used our own soy sauce. I grew up um, knowing that our soy sauce was different because it, I mean, tastes like a lot stronger than um, maybe other ones that you would typically get in the supermarket. But, um, but I also like didn't think about it that much until after I got into like Chinese cooking. Then I thought, oh my God, like, I suddenly remembered that there was this like blink and I was like, oh wow, like that's so cool. It's like the soy sauce is kind of like the, you know, quintessential um, Chinese ingredient almost. And so I think like um, after I quit my last restaurant job, I decided to spend a little bit of time in the soy sauce farm just to, like to learn about it just because I felt like it was um, such a good opportunity to like to have access to this um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, because I chose a really specific thing, like, which is wok cooking. And I feel like maybe that is pretty rare for, like, a female um, person to um, to do. Like, there's not that many female sh Chinese chefs, mm. let alone um, female Chinese wok chefs. So, um uh, I would say if I were to think of like disad your classic disadvantage would be like, you know, was it like hard to, you know, get into the kitchen in the first place or like be taken seriously or um, learn things. Um, and because I think because I went my my first like Chinese kitchen was a more modern and a little bit westernized mm. one. Um, so the barrier to entry <laughs> wasn't um, like as severe. Like I think if I would try to go into like a traditional Chinese restaurant and was like, oh, I, I want to learn how to like be a wok chef, I think no one would, maybe no one would have taken me seriously. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I think because I went in a more Western style, a Western mm -hmm. style run kitchen, it was easier. And then I don't know about advantages. Um, yeah, I don't know. My fantasy. <laughs> I think mm, maybe, like, maybe now that I've been doing these dinners, like, I think maybe people are more, like, surprised that, like, um, like, that I'm, like, female. I, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if that's an advantage, but... <laughs> or, like, do you have, like, a special palette? Because as a female, I, I do think, like, female and male, they maybe have like a different palette? Um, okay, yeah, okay. Hmm. I don't know about palette, but I think, um, huh, well, this actually goes then, goes into like 
what does being female mean? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, let me think for one second. Mm, maybe, okay, maybe if anything, it's like having a slightly different approach to the food or to cooking um, that maybe is a little bit more like held back or I don't know if I want to like necessarily associate this with femininity or like yeah, being female but um, yeah just like oh man I don't know like I think I don't know about being female but just like about being me yeah, like yeah, I yeah. do kind of I am really aware of like the chef bro kind of vibe you know and um, trying like have some distance from that and think about like my intentions and like my approach to um, like the food world and what I want to do and how I want to cook and how I want to present like what I'm doing maybe yeah it's that distance I don't know if I can Mm. Yeah, but definitely palate. I don't know if there's like a difference between like female <laughs> and male palates. I feel like I don't know. Like for my perspective, sometimes men they craving like protein, like. But mm. then for female, you're more cautious about nutrition or like, is it being healthy? Uh, or, like, I, oh, don't I don't know. know. I don't think I don't. I don't really <laughs> like that generalization just personal. personally, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I don't also don't think it's true. And um, yeah, I definitely don't feel very healthy. Like I love, like, I actually really love like oil. That's like kind of a thing. I really love oil, and um, maybe that's why I like walk cooking too. Because Greasy. It's a lot of like, yeah, I'm like being okay, like sprayed with fumes, like oil every day. Greasy. Yeah. So, what's your inspiration for your approach for your food and ingredients? Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think um, maybe I'm. Because I'm not really approaching the project and with the focus being on like the food, because I th- yeah, um, I feel like that's way more like chefy than I'm trying to be. Uh, so I, the the like the project for me is more like a world build, building or conceptual world building project. So I think when I like most of my inspirations really do not come from like food other like you know like restaurants or um yeah i think i like certain like musicians or um like even like film writers or like just writers um like you know books or something maybe are more inspirational to me in general okay you said you mentioned conceptual world building project what is that world look like that you're kind of trying to build or that you want to be a part of or that you see your food yeah i also want to know what music like you said music and books (laughs) yeah um okay so i think for me like the wendy's walk world maybe i have to backtrack a bit maybe i didn't explain very well earlier but i think um the wendy's walk world project has um it's like this alter ego project that for me, it's more like, f- like, for me to explore ideas of like tradition and sentimentality, and um, and also like, the I guess, currently the private, like or the dinners I'm doing, being at the soy sauce farm, and the soy sauce farm being like a really traditional one. Um, I think that whole setting and the whole project um, became this, like, space for me to, like, kind of immerse myself in this really like like backwards like looking or backwards facing um mode you know like so about like, like pers- yes yeah, kind of like um because I had to ask myself these questions at some point like oh why was I like what's this impulse to like learn the walk and like why am I so attracted to this like you know traditional school of cooking um and yeah i realize it's just me kind of working through my like um struggles with like what i call purity but i don't like it's you know like ideological purity or like um my tendency or impulse my natural impulses to like 
get into the really like rigid spaces. Um, so, um, so by like kind of having this Wendy role, I allow a side of myself to kind of really like dive into and like immerse myself into this like um, like world where I almost like a really total embracement of like like you know looking back but I think by it being like a, an alter ego I also try and keep like a little bit of space so I can like almost look outside um, of it and uh, add it with like a bit of a critical lens you know like kind of always questioning like why and whether that's like the best mode of being and then then after I made it into like a like public thing as in like other people can kind of come and interact with that then it's then it became also interesting to um, observe how other people um, relate to or like um, how the people like take in this like whole experience of like going to the soy sauce like visiting that and then maybe people are really like more interested in like the heritage part of it when um you know or like yeah I don't know if that explained it but um what was the original question also <laughs> um yeah oh, oh yeah that world yeah yeah so I think that's more the project that um of what it is to me personally but obviously I know it's also like a like dinner or just like a, like for other people they can also come in and take it and as like just like food you know which at the very core of it is just food so but this is all just like what goes on in my head for myself I mean that, that was going to be my my question um does it matter then to your your guests I guess should we call them more the, yeah you, you know the people participating in your in the world you're creating does it matter to them whether or not they see it as more than a food experience um and i guess you, you kind of already answered that secondly um how how much does how good the food tastes how much does that matter um and then i, I also still wanted to know what what books and films you're referring to but um yeah i guess does it matter how how good the food is um yes it does matter to me how good the food is because ultimately like and I think that's what um like going back to a few years ago before I started cooking like going into the chef like more like you know like doing the chef life thing um I was like trying to use food as a medium to convey certain like concepts but I think like the thing that I was like, really hard on myself um about like after like a certain project was like oh my god the like the actual, I just feel like you can't, if you want to use something as a medium, if it's not like good, it becomes gimmicky, you know? And I really wanted to avoid gimmicky. So I think it's really important for me to also make the food, like um, like the craft side part of it, which in this case would be like the food, to be um, really good and, or try to be really good. I don't know if it's really good. <laughs> or try to make it as good as possible and, um, only if that is successful can I then maybe like be successful in like conveying other things, you know? Um, and I think more specifically, like if this whole project is supposed to be like this space of like, you know, thinking about tradition and like all the all these things. Um, for example, all my dishes are pretty like I don't do anything really that um, modern or gimmicky or like. Um, chefy, by which I mean like inventing certain new dishes. Like none of my none of the food I'm doing are like new inventions. Really, they're kind of really classic, and um, and I think that's a part of it. You know, like um, yeah, like part of that whole narrative of like this is the space you're entering. It's like all about like classics and I don't know sentimentality and. Um, and I think you can only achieve that if it's good, the food, that's all. So I know that you're a vegetarian, so it's hard to, because you're not only cooking vegetarian, so is it hard for you to cook like 
meat dishes or? Well, actually, I don't cook meat dishes um, at the house, um, and I also don't identify as being vegetarian. I just don't eat meats. But um, so you're flexitarian. No, like I don't really like to put a label on <laughs> anything. Labels. I don't like labels. I think that we basically that's the thing. That's it. I don't you like just labels. Don't like um, yeah, I find them restricting. But um, yeah, I don't eat meat, and but I'm also like a little bit flexible with like you know soups or like stocks that are made from meat. But um, but yeah, I um, because for uh, yeah yeah I don't find like even when I was working in a restaurant and I had to cook meat like that wasn't particularly difficult for me like mm. um and but currently at like my soy sauce residency like Wendy's Walk World project like I act, actually don't cook any meat and um actually I use a lot of fake meats which I'm a huge fan of oh, like yeah. I <laughs> I think they're really exciting um like Omni pork and beyond beef yeah. and all that stuff. I like find them really cool. Um, so I cook those, and then I also cook some seafood at the moment. Mm. Um, which, yeah, I actually this year had been eating a bit of seafood. Um, yeah, it's not a big problem. For beyond me. meat or impossible? Oh, beyond a hundred percent. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> yummier. Okay. Mm. So you're cooking process how much of it is uh, scientific and how much of is feel I don't know about scientific because and that is something I really associate with like chefs like actual chefs yeah. which I don't feel like I'm an actual chef but like um, you know they're really interested in like the process of like you know how something becomes it's like, like chemistry yeah the, you know how something changes like the food changes and I, I I don't have that in me actually I just like yeah, and I'm, somehow I'm just like that. That part of me is missing. I'm not as curious about that, but um, but also I don't know if I'm cooking by feel also because that's also another thing that I also associate with like another type of chef, which is like kind of like like you know like ooh, when they cook with like feelings, um, which I'm also not. So I think for um, like for me, it's all I kind of as I said like the walk stuff I, it's more like a movement thing or like a like almost like a straight like copy of like how to cook something so it's neither by feel or nor by like science um i would say my approach it's more like a um about like copying or something or mm. learning does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> or like a curated a persona, like every time you cook like or, yeah. Yeah, I yeah I guess. So that's closer to scientific maybe then. Uh, n- no, because I feel like when people pass down, pass down knowledge, right? Pass down it, like would, yeah would, sure. I, I, I wonder if there's another word for it. Like I wonder if in Japanese they call sushi. Yeah, sushi. Yeah, it's chef kind of yeah. I think that's like, a ma- that is the like thing. sensei or something, yeah. right? Yeah, that's the thing. I um, think so. This is kind of like an anglicism of something which is actually not the exact same thing. But maybe you also simplify what a chef means because <laughs> you're also pigeonholing them. I don't know. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. I think those like the two things yeah. I, I associated yeah, chefs yeah. with are just more like a generalization of like <laughs> um, typically like you know chefs that I do know like mm. kind of I fall into kind of mm. more like those but yeah so what makes you like the most happy while you're cooking or like what process that makes you the most satisfied um, losing myself. <laughs> um, because I think when I'm cooking, because like there, in a way there feels like when, yeah, when I'm dealing with food, there's like almost just like a right way of doing it or a wrong way of doing it. Either like works or it doesn't work or like it tastes good or it tastes horribly, you know? Um, and so like, yeah, I, it's like the one, cause I think I tend to overthink in like everything that I do. And when I'm, cooking there's like this Im- immediacy in like the time frame or whatever where I like um there's just one way of doing it almost and 
then I feel like liberated from my overthinking self. Mm. <laughs> Maybe that's the satisfaction. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how long have you been living in Hong Kong now? Um, I, well, I always, um, I was, I'm from here. Um, and I always like, even when I was in school elsewhere, I always came back for holidays, but I've been, I've moved back to Hong Kong like full time four years ago. Mm. So. so does living in Hong Kong like influence your cooking? Um, yeah, definitely. Because, cause I, I kind of like chose Chinese food as the, my focus. Um, definitely being in Hong Kong is really, um, helpful and instrumental like you know there's so much like so much to learn from like everywhere that i go you know like getting like congee breakfast or something or like just everywhere i'm surrounded by the um the thing that i'm like working on so your kitchen mostly um do cantonese cuisine or like in chinese general or um it's yeah, the dishes I'm cooking right now are mostly Cantonese, um, just because like because I'm interested in wok, and I think like in Southern Chinese cooking, wok is um, I guess more important maybe, um, or like there's more because because like you know like um, the like seafood's really fresh or something, or like ingredients are really fresh. Um, so it becomes more like letting them shine, and then the wok cooking which is like really fast and like hot way of cooking, like really lets that shine. So I think um, because I, I'm focusing on wok, a lot of dishes that like kind of would highlight the wok part of the dish are Cantonese, but um, but I also have some dishes that are like Sichuanese or like Shanghainese, um, but I think mostly Cantonese maybe, yeah. So what do you care about food? Um, why do I care about food? Um, yeah, this has changed a bit, maybe. I think when I first got into it, it was more like um, a selfish reason, you know, like I, it, I, found, I found it to be something that I personally could like work with and found like, yeah, easy to work with. And under, I, I understood it the most, you know, out of as a medium, but this year, maybe um, I've started, I mean, in general, I think the whole world has started seeing food as like a more powerful tool, um, either like politically or, um, yeah, politically, or like, you know, for a community or something. Um, and I, I guess I've like opened my mind up a bit more to that. Um, and so I also care about food in that way, but that's like, a, it's for me, it's like a separate, like separate um, chain or train. I don't know what to say, <laughs> separate like path. So do you usually get your ingredient from a fresh market or you, like, where do you go to where you get ingredients? Um, yeah, fr uh, wet markets in Hong Kong, which so you can are really actually great. see them like alive and stuff. Um, yeah, for seafood, yeah, you can see them alive, but also like vegetables and everything, like um, eggs, like tofu, like everything feels really fresh. And I think that's actually a really unique thing about Hong Kong. Mm. Um, it's like the wet markets. You really like I love the layout of them. I love like how it's kind of like, you know, in the West, people like romanticize like farmers market. And um, but we already have a yeah. very like similar thing here without it being like this new thing with like a spotlight on them. It's just how it's always been. And it's so great because, um, yeah, and I, the, uh, like the tofu guy will know a lot about like his products or like the egg person will know a lot about their product, you know, it's, and you get to talk to them and they'll also like um, tell you how to do things with them too. And so I really like that kind of, yeah, like, aspect of going around a wet market and like saying hi to all your like people mm -hmm. <laughs> so what has been your biggest realization of the last year <laughs> or 2020 oh this is so hard <laughs> um 
biggest realization? Uh, that life is long, <laughs> and I feel like I don't know. I feel like this, and actually that everything is like, in a way, less important than maybe I previously thought. You know, it's, I maybe become a bit more chill. I'm a really not chill person by nature, but, um, uh, but I think this year just feels like, you know, it's like all so many different dramas that. In one year, I feel like it's been like many different lifetimes, you know. And but at the end of it, it's like you know, it's really dramatic. And then in the moment, you're like, oh my god, this is like the biggest crisis ever. But then, then it passes, and you're like, oh. And then so I think after the year, it just feels like actually, you know, it's just like life is just you know long and um, and things pass or not to like make them seem not important, but you know, like, you just kind of get on with it. Maybe that's my takeaway. Yeah. Um, uh, so, do you have any plan for the, the coming year for Wendy's and you? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I, yeah, don't. Never really liked planning ahead. Um, and especially now, I feel like you can't really plan ahead. So, just gonna let it, let it. Happen and see what happens. I don't know. <coughs> okay. Lastly, how would you describe this generation? Uh, this was also a really hard question. Um, uh, I don't know. I think if, I feel like it has to be something to do with like externalization, or at least like uh, maybe like an internalization of the externalization, you know, like it's, I think everyone's really aware of like how, like their, like where they, like their position in like the world or like, yeah, I don't know. Like, um, oh my God, this is so hard. <laughs> take a break, take a break. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, it, it's just, my God, this is really hard. Okay, maybe scrap what I said. Okay, again, this question. <laughs> how would you describe this Lastly, generation? <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, how would you describe maybe your generation? In Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. No, I do, I do think it's something to do with like, just being really like, like having a really like almost like, outsider view of like the self you know and knowing how you're presented or like knowing how like um but then but i think sometimes it's but i think that yeah sometimes it's self-aware and sometimes it's not you know like sometimes um like it's very much about like also like vocalizing like views and but sometimes i also feel like that vocalization um Sometimes it's not very self-aware in a way. Sometimes it's just like, oh, God, well, what, what do you being like more specific? What do you think contributes to that um, that feeling? Uh, like, what factors contribute to that externalized internal internalized externalization that you described? I mean, like the most obvious one is like social media, right? We all grew up like with social media um and but i yeah it's just like the current climate of like especially i mean yeah um especially i feel like this year like everything's a lot of it things have been shifted online a lot more so like everyone's just trying to like vocalize online or like state their like stances or views and yeah um yeah i i feel like maybe yeah maybe for me that's like the definitive um thing of this generation it's kind of this like exp like yeah positioning always always positioning and always like externalizing and vocalizing your position yeah 
Can I ask, oh, how do you fit into that picture? Um, I actually think I try not to do that as much because I, for me personally, I like to like step back more and um, and just like observe and maybe take a bit more time to really figure out what I my position um, and I think yeah I may be less able to like um, to ooh. um yeah how do I fit in yeah um sorry I'm just thinking now um Yeah, I like to like take a step back and um, not so quickly like feel the need to state my position or something. Um, just because I, f for me, I feel I would feel more like authentic if I took more time to like process everything and without the impulse of like thinking or, or without the yeah, the impulse of like thinking about how like how I want to like externalize. Yeah. Does that make sense? I feel like I just spoke a lot of gibberish. <laughs> it's a hard question anyways. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. Oh Thank you, Seth. Thank you. Huh? Scary. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh. We're still alive. <laughs> yeah.